Hi there friends. Welcome to my Stampin' Peace studio. I'm Mary Nave, coming to you live on Thursday or Wednesday, April 10th from Columbus, Ohio. Um, usually I'm on at Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern time, but this week I needed to um, switch to today, Wednesday. So thank you for being so accommodating and joining me today. I um, hope you all had a um, an interesting Monday. Many of you may have been um, able to see the total eclipse. Here in Ohio, um, the, uh, the path of totality covered a lot of Ohio. Um, and where I am, it was like, I don't know, 97, 99% or something. It was very cool. I could have driven to the other side, like 20, 30 minutes away and seen it just a little longer with the ring of fire um because i didn't see that from my home but it was still very cool kind of surreal um and you know the street lights popped on and car lights popped on it, you know 3 10 in the afternoon so it was kind of crazy um but still fun okay um yes tony i'll see you again tonight. Um, got distracted there for a minute. I'm so sorry. Um, today I'm going to be working with some of the Citrus Blooms dies and um, we won't be using the stamp set but there are um, some extra dies in that collection that do not coordinate with the stamps themselves but are meant to enhance the stamp set and other dies in the bundle. Um, so I'm going to flip my camera around now. And while I'm doing that, please share this video so that we can have others join us this afternoon for some creative inspiration and fun projects. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm trying to adjust that light a little bit so you don't get the glare too much. It's kind of tricky. All right, I put my glasses on and let's take a look at the products that we're using today. I first want to show you um, the Citrus Blooms bundle. This is coming up in the uh, new annual catalog, so you can start ordering these in May. Um, and you may have seen me do a card with these already, but what I'm really going to focus on today is these three dies. And as you can see, they kind of nest together, and we're going to use each one of these in a different way. I'm also using the classic letters. I'm doing a couple of monogram cards, and this can be found in the online exclusives. And then lastly, if you aren't familiar with the Distressed Gold paper, oh, get it while you can. It is retiring. I looked online just a little bit ago, and it still is available. Um, I believe it said low quantities. So, but it's really lovely and it's showing up kind of yellow on my um, com computer screen, but it really is a true gold. And as you can see, it does have that distressed look. So there is some kind of matte gold color and then the shiny gold, but really, really nice to work with. I used it a lot during the holidays. I also used that a lot um, with fall cards. It looks great with, let me pull out some scraps. Like here's, whoops, here's pumpkin pie. Um, looks fabulous with early espresso. Also great with, um, I would say any of the greens really, but I love it with old olive and Cajun craze. So 
I primarily was using it um, during the fall with the fall colors, the bold fall colors, and then for the holidays. And it really, um, no matter how you use the Distress Gold paper, it really does um, give some elegance to your cards or whatever project you're working on. So let's talk about these dies. As you can see, they're nested. This is the way they come. But they are three individual dies. And I'm first going to show you what they actually do. If you were to nest them, die cut just like this with all three nested on your cardstock, this is what you would end up with. Um, can you see that okay? Let me put this underneath. I don't know if that helps a little bit. Okay, so this is what you would end up with if you die cut these all at once. So you would remove that middle part and then you have um, the leafy frame with the dotted design all the way around. You can also use these separately. I especially like to use this one separately. It just makes a nice shape that really covers your entire card front. Now, what I'm gonna tell you about these, yes, you can use each of these individually, but um, I made a bunch of cards the other day and I just really needed this part, not even, and I just did it on a rectangle. I didn't cut out this shape. And that was being used as my card front, but I started thinking, well, why not leave this in here and cut this piece at the same time? because I can use this on lots of other cards, just as a little accent, maybe as an embellishment, um, and maybe to back a sentiment or some flowers, something like that. So I strongly encourage you to use them together. And let's get started right now. Oh, did I say this? So if you were to use just this die, you're gonna get this beautiful shape. And it's large. It really covers most of your card front on an A2 card. Um, so it really is lovely. It's nice. It's um, kind of fancy, but not fussy, I'll say. So I really love that shape. So now let me grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I am using the large one for this, so I know it can be a little hard to see at times when I'm working with the large machine. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the two leafy dies together. And I'm going to use that, those two pieces, whoops, to die cut this. Now this Mossy, mossy Meadow cardstock measures four inches by five and a quarter. So basically a um, layer that I like to use for my card fronts often. And again, as you can see the inside nest, but I'm going to end up with two different pieces. I do want this to, um, the outer one to be centered because that whole piece will then be used as part of my card front. And if it's your preference, you want to um, tape those dies down, by all means, go ahead. You can use post-it notes. Um, I've got the post-it tape that somebody introduced me to not long ago. Um, washi tape, whatever it takes, whatever you're most comfortable with. Now, most of our dies, we can just roll through once, right? I'm going to roll it back through the other way. The reason being, there are so many tiny cuts. I mean, look at all this. So many tiny cuts, and that's just the one piece. So it's got a lot of detailed cutting to do. So that's why I wanted to roll it back and forth. So it went through the rollers twice. And... I have my sponge and my um, die brush, which is an attachment to the take your pick tool. It comes with the brush and then this 
um, sponge. And one thing about this, people think this is intended to remove the die cut from the die, and that's not accurate. What it's intended to do is help loosen up all those very small pieces, okay? The negative pieces, the ones we're not going to use. All those pieces that fall out. And that we'll throw away. So I've done that and I'm just going to gently tug on that until this comes out. There may be a few little pieces here that you need to maybe poke through. And it should be real easy to do because this cuts very well, especially because you're gonna run it through the embossing folder twice, correct? That looks good. And then same thing with this one. I'm go over that just a little bit more. And just use your um, piercing tool from your, take your pick tool, it comes with this, and poke some of those holes. It will not poke through your cardstock, but it will loosen up the die cut, and then it also helps get rid of some of those little stray pieces. Okay, I think that looks good. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do this, but I am going to um, tell you that it is best to remove all of these little pieces. The reason being is if you don't and you keep die cutting with this, piece, these pieces are gonna get stuck in there and then more will get stuck on top of them and then you don't get as good of a die cut if the impressions are, um, or the the shapes, the dies, the cardstock is building up in those little pieces. And I just think it's easier, go through and do it while you have it out because there's nothing worse than grabbing a die, detailed die like this, you're ready to go, ready to use it, and then you look at it and it's full of cardstock. And that's frustrating, so. Kind of clean that off as you go before you put it back in the case or put it away. All right, now let's make a card. So the first thing, this is going to be for the first card. This piece I'm saving for my second card, okay? And I realized I have all these bits of you know, partially used sheets of dimensionals. I know, no surprise, right? <laughs> ah. So I thought I'm going to just use up all these partial sheets, even though the large ones would probably be good um, for these corners. And then I'm gonna get a little help from my take your pick tool again. If you do this method and you get to the point where it's not picking up one and you've tried two or three times, just pull them off and start again. Start with a clean piercing tool. And then I'm going to line up the edges and the corners. If it helps you, you can um, cut the distress gold or whatever your layer is underneath just a tiny bit smaller. Like I'm not even gonna say an eighth, just a little smidgen on one long side and one short side. Um, but usually it lines up pretty well. And if you need to adjust, you can, for the most part, pull up where you put the dimensionals. And 
You could also um, use adhesive sheets, but then you just wouldn't be able to pop it up. You would be sticking it flat to the layer, all right? And then I've got a piece of Mossy Meadow for a card base. So five and a half by eight and a half inches and scored it four and a quarter on the long side. And I'm going to add this to the front. And you can see this is simple and elegant, but it's not overly fussy. Overly fussy is just kind of not me. I do like simple and elegant, but I don't think, I personally don't like things to be real fussy, but you do what feels good to you. And for these cards, I'm using um, Very Vanilla as my neutral. And one thing I do want to mention about Very Vanilla, because I've heard from some people and there has been some confusion, Very Vanilla is not going away. We will continue to carry the packs of 8.5 by 11 Very Vanilla cardstock. And those are the packages of the regular Very Vanilla cardstock, the packages that have 40 sheets. What is going away, and I think is already gone, is the Very Vanilla Thick cardstock, which I like to use for card bases, so I'm going to miss that. Um, the Very Vanilla Thick is going away, and the Very Vanilla envelopes. And I do not know if, I, I'm sure the Thick cardstock is gone in Very Vanilla, but I'm not sure about the Very Vanilla envelopes. Um, but the regular Very Vanilla cardstock is staying around, all right? Okay, and then I've already stamped a letter M for Mary from the, oops, here it is, the Classic Letters Alphabet stamp set, which is on the online exclusives. It's really a nice size. This is a one and a half circle punch I'm using. So you can kind of see what, um, that gives you some perspective of the size of the letters. And I'm going to adhere this to the mossy meadow circle. So my circle punches are one and a half inch and one and three quarters inch. I'm gonna bring in some more of those dimensionals. And I'm going to put that right in the center. So now I have just a, a pretty um, monogrammed card, note card, to send to somebody. Um, somebody I want to touch base with and get in touch with. Um, and I think that's pretty. Um, think in, if you're not into the monogram thing, and, and the reason I did a monogram is because we're in almost to the middle of April. And next month is Mother's Day. There's also lots of graduations. And um, also um, people in need of teacher gifts. And what a nice gift this would make. A few, you know, four or six of these cards, maybe with the teacher's initial. Um, and that's the reason I went with using the Classic Letters stamp set because I wanted to give you that idea of making monogram cards for, um, for gifts. And it really can work for anybody. Okay, so there's one. And then let's go ahead and make the second card. Okay, so I'm basically using the same supplies. I will be using this. Um, I'll call it the inside leaf section. And I've got a piece of the distressed gold, which is five and a quarter by four inches. And I'm going to use that other 
die to die cut this into that pretty shape. And I'm only using the shape, but I did cut the paper pretty much to size, so I do want to get it centered in there. I try not to waste my special papers. <laughs> so just get it in there. Keep in mind too, many of you know this tip already, but for those of you who may not have heard it, when you are die cutting with a die that has straight lines, you always want to turn those straight lines just slightly, okay? So that you're putting the die in at an angle. That will help it cut better. And the reason for that is if it goes, the die goes through um, straight across and is exactly in line with the rollers in here, it tends to jump and then you don't get necessarily get a good cut. So turn it on an angle. It doesn't have to be a big angle. Even a slight angle will do. And this is a simple shape, so I do not need to run this through twice. And it pops out really easily, and then it gives me that very nice um, dotted detail all the way around. Can you see that? I'm not sure. I think you can see a little bit. Okay. And I am going to... I've got another um, card base of Mossy Meadow. I keep wanting to say Mossy Green. Mossy Meadow has been around for so long. Why do I want to say that? And I don't know what happened to my phone folder. But that's okay. It's here somewhere. Buried. I don't know. I don't know, folks. It'll turn up. But anyways... I'm going to adhere this to the middle of my card front. This paper, by the way, the um, Distress Gold is very thin, so it's very easy to work with. It die cuts really nicely. Yeah, Pat, you can do that. Use the outside as a frame on another card. You're absolutely right. And in that case, if you were doing it um, using the frame part, I would cut the paper to be the exact same size as my card front. So five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm putting some very vanilla on the inside. And then I'm going to use this. Okay. And it's, notice, it's not a, a exactly symmetrical, and that's okay. Leaves aren't, are they? Um, but I'm going to do my best to put it in the center, and this is the simplest way to adhere it. You don't need to adhere every tiny little leaf, but if you put some adhesive down in the center of your card front and then just press that into place, it works perfectly. And... Once again, I've already die cut the letter M and I'm going to punch it with the one and a half inch circle punch. Now, I do wanna show you something. This is how it's going to go on my card front, but I wanna show you something. On that first card, we backed that letter M on a piece of mossy metal cardstock. And it, it pops, it shows up really nicely on that first card, doesn't it? Look what happens when we do this. That outer circle kind of just fades in. It doesn't add anything to the card. But I can remove that and now it really pops, it really stands out. Each element of the card does its own job, so to speak. Um, Tanya, the name of the alphabet set is Classic Letters, and it is in the online store. You won't find it in any catalog. It's in the online store. And 
and I'll add some dimensionals here. And then I have something else to show you. Now, if you weren't using these for monogram cards, what kind of cards would you use them for? You could, and you could easily change up the cardstock and the ink colors. Think of how this um, Distress Gold would look against black. Super classy, right? I would say I could make a wedding card with the black and the gold. Okay, so these are the two cards. And again, we used all three of these nesting dies. Okay. And, um, oh, where's, oh, here it is. Here it is. Now, I'm going to show you an example of two more cards that are, are basically the very same cards as these, but I swapped out the card base, the Mossy Meadow card base, for vanilla card bases. And you get sort of a different look completely. Isn't that kind of cool? Cindy, I do think these would be beautiful for sympathy cards. Just a, a nice, simple um, sentiment in the middle. I do, I do think so. I agree totally. All right. So tell me, which is your preference? The ones on the Mossy Meadow card bases or the ones on the Very Vanilla card bases? For me, it's a toss-up. I like them both. For me, it's a toss up, but I'd be interested in knowing what, um, what you think. Okay, I, um, I don't know if you want a card with an M, unless you're a Mary or a Melissa or uh, Madison, something like that, but um, I will draw for a winner and I will swap out the M for whatever your first initial of your first name is. Okay, how's that? All right, let's um, use classic, excuse me, classic letters, or M for mom, yes, Jean, with Mother's Day next month, that's awesome. Uh, classic letters, let's use that as our code word for today. If you want to have your name put into the drawing to receive one of the cards, made in this Facebook Live, please type in the comments now, classic letters. Okay. I have to say I am behind on my mailings for the um, Facebook Lives. So I appreciate your patience, put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been a rough week or so with my back again, but I'm doing the best I can. Okay, any questions? Any questions? So a reminder that the Distressed Gold paper um, is retiring. So get it before it's gone, okay? It is retiring. Get it before it's gone. It's 12 by 12 sheets and a package of two. And to be honest, I don't remember what the price is. Um, and then... Classic Letters, we said, is in the online store, online exclusives. And then, I have so much going on here. Um, the Citrus Blooms Bundle, the stamp set and the dies, will be available. Um, I always forget if it's May 1st or May 2nd, and I don't have a new catalog handy to look at. Tony, do you know, is it May 1st or May 2nd that the new catalog starts? Any other demonstrators watching that may know? Anyways, as soon as the new catalog launches, then you'll be able to purchase this. It has gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous designer series paper to coordinate. It is May 1st. Okay. Um, Pre-order was April 2nd. So I kept thinking first and second. It's hard to keep track of all these things. All right, everybody, I do want to let you know that I will not be live tomorrow, Thursday, April 11th, as usual, because I am um, going to meet up with some friends for a craft weekend. 
So no Facebook Live tomorrow, April 11th. All right. Maybe I'll pop on and say hi at some point in the day, uh, but no Facebook Live. So the next time I will see you for a Facebook Live is Tuesday, April is it 16th um, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. All righty. Thanks so much. Have a great evening. Um, and I look forward to meeting up with you again. Bye-bye.